All right, hopefully you're feeling fairly confident with their strategies for factoring. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to add a few more, but these are actually meant to be a big help. What's happening here is there are some special patterns that are much easier to do. So if you're feeling like you can't handle more approaches to doing this, although it makes like the thought process a little longer, like you're looking for more kinds of uh, polynomials to factor, this is actually going to be very helpful. So let's dive in. The first one we're going to look at is called a perfect square trinomial. And I have a warm-up activity that shows you this too. What it does, if you are foiling out something like this, if you foil out something like this where you have the same numbers and the same sign, what happens is you create this. You always keep getting two of that middle term. And my activity, if you did that, also shows you that how the signs work and everything. But basically what I'm getting at here with this pattern is someone kept foiling and they saw something kept happening over and over. And the pattern gone backwards would make factoring much, much simpler. So if you look at this page, you look at all this stuff, this doesn't mean anything to you. Let me just show you what it means. What we're looking at here, here's my special pattern. I am going to always first check that if there's a GCF. You'd always do that, but for these next few, I don't think we're going to have any. So what I'm going to do, excuse me as I adjust the volume here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check for square roots on the front term and square roots on the back term. Now I have square roots. Now do you see the square root of 9x squared is 3x and the square root of 4 is 2. So I'm going to write that. They've done it for me down below. Should I? Let's see. Yeah, I'm going to do it because that's not going to make sense to you at first. So I'm going to do what we've been doing. I'm just going to make two of these. I'm going to write down those square roots twice. Now they may even show this at the end a little differently. It's the same thing, but I'm going to keep it consistent with what we've been doing. The square root of the front is 3x. I'm going to write that twice. The square root of the back is 4. Okay? Now, we've got this middle term and so it's going to take that sign. It's going to take the sign of that middle term. Okay, now that's it. That's all there is to it. Now there's one thing you have to be careful of, and I'm going to show it to you. I don't usually trick somebody with this, but um, the textbooks can, depending on who you're taking this with. Now, when you foil this back out, do you see that I'd get a 6x here? and a 6x there, that would combine to make the 12x. You're supposed to double check because it's possible that this middle, if this was 14x, even though we had the square roots on the front and the back, it wouldn't make the middle. So basically what you're checking is that you wind up getting that double middle term. 6x here, another 6x gets you the 12x. Yeah, now the textbooks, some, some books will write it like this, 3x plus 2 squared. Now that is true, but remember, it means the same thing as this. And so when I work them, I'm not going to do 3x plus 2 squared. I'm going to show it twice because that's how we work the other ones, and I want it to be consistent. Okay, pause it if you already want to try this on your own, but we've only done one, so I'm going to work this here. I've got square roots on the front and on the back. 2x, 2x. I'm going to write those square roots down. Now I've got this middle term here and it's going to take that sign plus 3. It's going to be the same sign in both places which is what creates that middle. Now if you want to double check you get 6x. I mean you should double check if you want to be sure of it. I don't do this trick very much like I wouldn't mess with you that much but 6x and 6x that's the 12x. We've got it. We're good. Okay, try another one. Pause if you want to do it on your own. I see square roots on the front and on the back. It's going to make the factoring much easier. So I'm going to just, there's my square roots from the front and the back. It's got a middle and it's a plus, so I'm going to give it a plus on both spots. 
Now double check yourself, 12y and 12y, that's going to make a 24y. Okay, now the only thing that's changed here, I guess I'm going to work it myself, I don't like the way the book has shown it. I've got square roots on the front, and I've got square roots on the back. So I'm going to write them down. But look what's changed. I've got that middle, but now the middle is a negative. So these need to be negatives. Now if you want to check yourself if this is going to work, just to be sure, I get negative 36y when I do these guys. I get negative 36y when I do those guys. That's going to make the negative 72. Okay, try this on your own. I think you've got it by now, but I'll work it. I'm going to write down my square roots on the front and the back. There's this middle term, and it's a negative, so there are going to be negatives. Again, you know the routine. Pause if you want to do it. Those are my square roots. There's a mid, the middle's a minus, so my minus. And that does work out if you want to check the middle. All right, we've seen this earlier. Throw in the y squared on the back. It looks confusing, but it's not a big deal. We're going to do the same thing we've been doing. I'm going to, I still have square roots on the front and the back, so I'm just going to write them down. The only thing that's changed is the square root on the back is 7y, but it doesn't change anything functionally. Now I've got a middle that's a positive. Okay, if you want to check, but this is going to work out for the middle. Okay, try this one if you want to. I see square roots on the front and the back. So I'm just writing them down. doesn't matter that there's y's. I got a middle and it's a plus, and I'm done. That looks terrible. My handwriting is poor, but there we go. Okay, more of the same. I got square roots on the front and the back. Positive in the middle, so plus, plus. Okay, I'm suspecting that they're doing this because it's not going to work out, so let's see. Yeah, it doesn't work. So I do my square root on the front, I get 3x, and on the back I get 5. So if I did, oh, it might work another way. Yeah, so let me show you this. I'm going to take you through this one. So I'm trying to do 3x. I do see the square roots on the front and the back. So I do this, but here's the problem. 3 times 5 is 15, 3 times 5, this would add up to 30x and it does not work. So this one is not going to work out. Excuse me, I got a cough there. Okay, so what we're going to have to do is do this by, they do this by the AC method. Now I'm not going to work another, we got a whole video on that, but they did the 9 and 25. Look for the two numbers. This would be a hard one to find. Turns out to be 5 and 45. So my point to this story is that the even though I had the square roots in the front and the back, we didn't make the middle properly, so we had to that didn't work. We had to try the AC. Okay. What you're gonna see here is that doing the middle is not going to work. This is gonna be a big AC one. So I have the square roots on the front and the back, but it's not going to make the middle. I don't know if I want to do another big AC method on this. Let me just see how hard it's going to be. Okay, so we're doing the 16 times the 9.
sorry, I messed this up. The video paused for a minute there, so I was thinking through the numbers and if I wanted to do this. Okay, I'm going to try it. 9. Okay, so 144. All right, so we need to make 30. So we're doing an AC method here because the, the our uh, square roots on the front and square roots on the back didn't cut it. So I don't know where this is going. Maybe you do. So I'm going to do my trick that I showed you in the other video. So this breaks down to be a rather lengthy list of possibilities. All right, so we're looking for 144 and two numbers that add to get 30. It's got to be out of the combination of this. So I hope I don't have to pause again. I don't want this to take a long time. But so I'm checking my options here. Yeah, I can't find it off the top of my head here. I'm still doing my groups. I don't want the video. I'm going to pause it and see if I can find it. Okay, you might be faster at this than me, but so I had to pause and go through all the choices. Here's what I finally came up with. So I saw that if I do, I'm trying to make 30. So if I do... 2 times 2 times 2 and 3. There's one of them. And 2 times 3 is my other. So I've got 6 over here. I've got 6, 12, 24 there, and that makes it work. So my two numbers are 6 and 24. So I'm doing 6r squared plus 24. Now, this is weird, but it's rs. Yeah, actually, I'm kind of glad I did this one because I want to show you that. So now i got four pieces, GCF of the front. GCF of the back. Okay, now out of the back here, I, or at the front, I should say, I can pull out an 8R. And so I'm going to get 2R plus 3S. Now out of the back, I'm taking a 3S, and I'm going to get 2R plus 3S. So I did it right. I've got my match. So I've got 8R plus 3S is the one group. My match is the other. It doesn't matter which order you do it. It's the same if you're multiplying two numbers. All right, what do I got here? Do I have more of the same? Um, big numbers again. There's no GCF. I, I'm not going to stumble through another AC method there. Uh, yeah, I don't see it off the top of my head. Yeah, I'm going to skip that. We have the AC video, so and they're hard. Let's get to the point of this, which is the special products. I'm looking for square roots here on the front and the back. Oh, no, I got a GCF first. That's what they're doing. So always pull out a GCF. Well, I've got one. I can pull out the 4Y, which then is going to turn this into something nice. I then check for square roots on the front and the back, and I've got them. Oh, well, they don't, they don't do that very well. So I'm going to do this 3X. I'm going to write my two square roots down. Now I've got a middle term, so they're both going to be minuses because of that minus. Double check myself, negative 6x, negative 6x. Yeah, I got it. Now just don't forget, you got to bring down the GCF. Okay, this has got a GCF, so pull that out first and then try this. All right. I believe this is my GCF. I might be short, but I'm not. Yeah. Okay, that's good. So 2y is my GCF. Now, check for square roots on the front and the back, and I've got them. So I'm going to do 2x. All right, I got a middle. The middle is a minus, so I get two minuses. Don't forget to bring down your, GC, your GCF. You can always check, but this one works out. Check the middle. Okay, try this one. I believe your GCF is going to be 3Q. Okay. 
OK. Now, we've got square roots on the front and the back of what we just created. So I'm going to write those down twice. We've got a middle, so two pluses. All right, um, I thought we were doing all the special products in one video, but that is going to be, that's the perfect square trinomial. Next, we're going to look at something called perfect square binomials.